This is the, uh, this is the Joe Ben Wheat collection of Southwestern Textiles. And it's stored in these compactor storage units. In the collection, about 850 textiles. Um, Joe Ben Wheat started studying the textiles. I mean, he was always interested in them, but he started studying them in the early 70s and took a sabbatical and, and went around to lots of different museums and collections and uh, studied 3,500, 4,000 textiles, something like that from other museums. And then we had a small textile collection, but then Joe, based on what he learned about the history of Navajo weaving and Southwestern weaving, well, not just Navajo, but Pueblo and, and Northern New Mexico, Hispanic, um, and Northern Mexican um, weaving, um, assembled a collection. Uh, it doesn't have a representative piece from every style from every period, but it, that, that was the goal ultimately, was, was to have a really wonderful study collection and some individually amazing pieces as well. He, uh, Joe Benwee liked pieces that he could tell uh, from documents that, that accompanied them where and when they were collected. Some of those pieces have real stories that go with them, as you might imagine. He goes down the Grand Canyon, and a couple of these guys literally bail out. They say, this is crazy. They're going down the Grand Canyon in these wooden boats. Three of his guys leave, um, and Powell makes it down the Grand Canyon successfully, but he comes back a few years later trying to find those guys and uh, to go down the, Grand, the canyon again. And he gears up at Fort Defiance in Arizona, which is just west of the, the present uh, Navajo Capitol Window Rock, and buys a couple of, more than a couple, uh, Navajo weavings. And he wasn't buying these to collect, he was buying these to use. And, um, John Wesley Powell probably slept here. So this piece, you can see, it's been used very hard, and you know, as the cowboys say, used hard and put away wet probably more than once. It probably went down the Grand Canyon more than likely. Um, and there's been a lot of restoration work, or stabilization work, not restoration, stabilization on it, so it doesn't fray anymore. But what was attracted to Joe, uh, attractive to Joe about this is he knew where, where and when it was obtained. It was obtained by John Wesley Powell at Fort Defiance. Here's a beautiful, um, what they call chief's blanket, uh, third page chief's blanket, very, very fancy. Um, these were, all these things that we call Navajo rugs are actually um, started off life um, decades and decades ago as wearing blankets, things that we, people would wear. And the things that we call chief's blankets uh, were very uh, sought after by Plains Indian uh, people and they were very expensive. They had many, many horses to trade for one of these blankets. So it was only the uh, most important guys or what people we call chiefs who could afford to have these things. But when you see somebody wearing one of these, these textiles, it was woven to be worn. The, the patterns um, extend out to the edges and when you drape it over your shoulders and pull it together, the pattern forms a pattern on the front, and they're just dramatic pieces. When you see a guy that really knows how to wear one of these things, um, you know, Navajo man or a Plains man, a uh, picture of them wearing one of these things, it's truly a, a stunning garment. Uh, the Joe Van Wee collection uh, is not limited to Navajo or Diné weaving. Uh, this is a Pueblo piece from Acomo Pueblo, um, 1860s, 1865, somewhere in there, and it's a woman's manta, a woman's wearing blanket. Um, the Pueblo weaving itself is technologically very different. Uh, it uses a different loom and everything. The Navajo weaving and then all this embroidery work, this beautiful embroidery work, the blues and the reds, is something the Pueblo people do and Navajo people seldom do. This is you know, different cultural traditions that Navajo people um, certainly, you know, they could embroider if they wanted to. I mean, these are very skilled craftsmen and, art, and, and artists, but uh, they do it all on the loom where Pueblo people do it on the loom and then, then add embroidery. And, I mean, there's some wonderful weaving here too that add the embroidery, it goes way back. Um, painted textiles as well, uh, though you don't see that so much anymore, that, that designs actually be painted on cotton textiles uh, in prehistory. For me, the, the importance of having these types of exhibits is that the, the museum is, has this tremendous um, natural endowment of collections. We have these unbelievable resources. I mean, to think here in Boulder, we have one of the top three collections in the world of Navajo textiles. So it's really important to share that with the public. Uh, they've been seen and studied by you know, uh, researchers. Well, what a great opportunity then to share that with the public, to show people diversity of form, of creativity, of, of different materials, a wide range of, of, of interests that people may have with these things. So, uh, and it really is a wonderful lens then to look into culture, design, uh, understand the people through uh, the objects, the material objects they've created.